All right, everyone, welcome to the postponed February um, CentOS board meeting. We were not going to be able to have agenda due to people traveling um, last week, so we chose to postpone by a week, and we have a very successful attendance. Um, of all the seated board members, only one is absent due to sickness. So this is really good for us. Um, I will add the previous minutes link to the agenda. It is not there currently. Um, and I'm going to cut and paste the link to agenda for everybody right now. If anyone wants to follow along. I wanted to start off with um, an update on the docs day. Because I think that'll be pretty quick before we get into more strenuous conversations. It was really successful. Thank you for everyone who attended. We got a lot of work done, a plan in place, um, a GitHub infrastructure um, for what the new website and documentation will look like. Um, Alon has also been working on the graphical design of it. Um, he did send a, I think it is an issue, and I apologize. We'll all track it down and add it into here um, about possible um, translation that we could use with our system. Um, and I will have to track that down, but it was a really um, good idea that I think would work for us where we wouldn't have to install anything different. Um, so I will track that down and get that into the agenda, possibly while Sean is talking and then not following along with the agenda. Um, one thing that did come out of it was getting an outreach intern to help us with docs. Um, I will, Sean and I will be meeting with Sage tomorrow about adding CentOS project as an outreach host, um, uh, Meta very nicely is going to sponsor the outreach intern. Um, Michelle from Meta and Sean are going to act as the mentors. We need to get them both registered as well as what the project is going to be. Um, it's going to be a little bit of tooling and some docs work. Um, so hopefully we can get an intern who is interested in that. And this, I believe, will be the first intern for CentOS. Johnny Bryan, do you know of any possible interns we've had in the past? We've had a couple of Google Summer of Code folks, but this will be the first outreachy one for sure. Okay. So I'm looking forward to this. I think it is a great thing and also meets, you know, some of that success document that we're still trying to get the metrics for. Um, does anyone have any questions on the docs day? Anything note that I add, we do have, we took some minutes, it's kind of a scratch pad, but I added a link to that uh, minutes HackMD into our agenda. So if anyone wants to ah, see that. Thank you. I was actually looking for that earlier and then forgot. Yeah, yeah. Right. We should see if we can get, um, when does the um, outreach internship finish? I want to say May. Uh, it starts or in it's May. the May cohort. I think it's a May cohort. Uh, we should um, maybe see if we can, it's, it's, it's worth looking at if we can get the intern to uh, flock. It would be a good opportunity huh? to, to meet people. Okay. Obviously, we won't have a CentOS event during that. A block of time, but a lot of us are at block anyway. Anyone else has anything to add on Doc Day? All righty. Um, sent to us project and infra sig. So I was talking to Matthew a little bit at FOSDOM, and one thing they're working on, and I've included the Azure issue link is they're working on a policy to set priorities for their infra team. 
So even internal Red Hat requests for that in infra team would go to the same location. So everything gets funneled into one place. It's easier for it to be assigned out. Um, part of that is who's going to um, provide priorities for that work. And we may not want to get as detailed as they're working on. Um, currently our infra team is just Fabian. Um, and I'm pretty sure Fabian is more than capable of setting his own priorities like, oh, this will take me five minutes. Let me really quickly do that. And then I'll get back on this larger task. Um, and I did talk to him and he seemed open to us doing something like this. I have not opened up an issue yet. I wanted to get what other people's thoughts on this. So I read the peg your issue and we talked about this as well when we were in Brussels. It's nothing entirely clear to me what the like what the actual or like this sounds like describing a project that's a process that someone needs to run for then managing the priorities for that team, which is fine. Uh, but this feels like something like whoever is PMing that team will want to follow. It's, it's not entirely clear to me what like from our side and from FESCO's side for Fedora, what was actually requested here. Um, I think on their side is that their infra team gets tickets from all different directions. Like they have an internal ticket and then they have an external ticket. So their work is in two different places. And I believe Fabian's might be as well. So this would just give visibility to everything would go in one place. So it's easier actually to then assign work. Um, like I said, I think they want a group or a person in the community to then go ahead and assign priorities to things. I'm not sure we need that step. Um, it might be a good idea to put some governance into it, but I don't think we need necessarily a group of people or an individual. And I saw Josh, you went off of my, so do you have a comment? I do. Um, we have a, we have an agenda item later on the agenda uh, that I think might actually help with this. Um, if I understand it correctly, which is the SIG council, maybe, maybe that could be the group that actually helps facilitate this conversation. Yep. That's a possibility as well. Bex. Um, I'll share that uh, in my role, I have occasionally been asked to work with that team to help them understand what project priorities there were for the CentOS project. So I think anything that allows us through the SIG council or or however we wish to do that to as a board express those priorities would allow that to be an easier conversation when that team's setting it. But we need to be careful that we're not thinking that we are setting that team's work because they may have other tickets that are actually priorities or tasks that are priorities for them. But this way they can understand the percentage of time that they can allocate to the CentOS project. What would the CentOS project want out of that time? Instead of, for example, asking me. Yeah, and I think if there say there was a ticket to totally upgrade, you know, the infrastructure that we don't have visibility to by everything being in one place, it's going to be a whole lot understandable to know why something didn't get done very quickly because of things that are going on in the background that otherwise we wouldn't have visibility. I think that is part of the main advantage of something like this. Any? Uh, ahead, I'll ben. just jump in briefly. I, I haven't fully read the entire FESCO ticket. I will not try to speed read it in this second. Um, and I don't, I have not had a detailed conversation with Aoife, um, but I would not make the assumption that all work of that team will be publicly visible. There may be okay. Red Hat roadmap items that wind up in that team's uh, basket of work for various reasons that are not public. Okay. But and this I know should help us understand at least where our priorities came in and open up a conversation with them about what they could realistically offer. And also the realization that our infra team is smaller than the Fedora infra team. So we may not need as much information in their proposal as we end up needing in our proposal. 
Um, so this is basically a fact-finding message to see if there is interest in something like this before we try to work on an issue and a proposal for this. I mean, I think providing input to infra for this is likely useful. Uh, I am, I am personally not entirely convinced by like the the actual process that's described there and how much of that we will end up directly working on. Uh, but like, if the outcome of this is that we have a channel to provide feedback to infra on this stuff is important to us, this stuff is less important to us. Please prioritize this stuff. That seems valuable to me. Yeah, I don't think we'll need near as much of what Fedora is putting in their um, governments and documentation. I'm just really interested in the visibility and the communication improvements. Well, with, with stream being very important to, to rel development now, um, I, I don't think, I don't think we're going to have a problem getting most things done anyway. I mean, it, it, it seems to me that, that most of our stuff is getting done pretty quickly right now that, that I see. Uh, anyway. Not really. Like, so while it's probably true that core CentOS stream stuff is getting done, um, that's not necessarily the case for anything that SIGs are asking for. So we, because they're two separate infrastructure and the decision-making process for things that SIGs ask for is unfortunately rather opaque, um, we do actually hit some degree of this problem um, when it comes to infrastructure requests and prioritization. But I am also realistically thinking that no one's going to accept such a, you know, uh, requesting this kind of visibility for, for CentOS SIG infra requests. Um, and it also, again, as, as Amy has pointed out, all we have is Fabian. We don't have other people for, for a CentOS community infrastructure. And Fabian's great, mind you, but because Fabian is one person, it's very easy to figure out what he's doing. Um, we just go ask him. Uh, the The real problem comes in when there's more people or whether there's a hidden product manager or project management thing going on that silently defers or diverts or, or deprioritizes something without telling anyone. Um, those are the problems that CP generally has. Um, and I know both Fedora and CentOS community have experienced various ver forms of the these problems. But again, I don't know if this is going to help that, with those problems at all. And just be clear, sometimes we drop the ball as well, um, like getting feedback to Fabian about the mailing lists and getting, you know, the CentOS Linux 7 end of life. You know, we drop the ball as well. Um, so we need to be better about responding to things and Again, that might be something, as Josh mentioned, farther along in the agenda, the advisory council, or I think we just called it SIG council is what we ended up with. Um, so again, bringing this up is truly to see if there is interest, and it seems like there is interest, um, but that we don't need as much as what Fedora is putting, you know, planning on putting in theirs, and that there will still be the expectation that there will be some limited visibility. Does anyone else have any input before we move on to the next topic? All righty. Um, the next thing on the agenda is issue number 124, the redistribution, redistribution of rel kernel sources. I just wanted to formally in a meeting thank Brian Stinson and Fabian for working with the Kmon SIG to get this resolved. It was closed last week. So congratulations and kudos. That is a nice win for CentOS stream. And we get a blog post on this. I was just going to say that. 
<laughs> I, I'm personally curious on like how this was resolved in the end, but I feel like this will be something that the community in general will be interested in hearing more about. I also want just positive press for once. <laughs> yes, that too. All right, so we can possibly go back to the SIG and ask them and maybe get Brian's input for it as well. All right, so let's work on that. Sean, do you want to take ownership of that, pinging them? Uh, yeah, I can take ownership on, on driving it. I do want to get some uh, technical input from people so that the blog post isn't just like we did it, but it's like how we did it or something, right? Maybe we can get well, them maybe. to write it and then you edit and add the non-technical aspects of it. Um, all right, so two new issues that we created since our last meeting, um, adding board activity clarity in governance. Um, basically, we went through and added to the SIGs what is active um, and what is not an active um, SIG. So I wanted to bring that clarity also to the governance for the board. Um, and that is issue number 125. We've had a little communication. Um, some things that were suggested also similar to that activity information that we put in for the SIGs was we came up with absent from three consecutive board meetings without prior communication. We understand that people travel, people get sick, work gets in the way. The main thing is letting someone know. Um, if it's like, I'm going to be on vacation, hey, that can be public. If it's I'm sick and will not be available, communicate that to Sean or myself. Um, totally understandable. Not everything can be public. Um, but I'm going on a trip around the world. Yeah, that can kind of be public. Unless you don't want anyone visiting your house while you're gone. So I can see that one being actually being either way. Um, lack, lack of response to the community architect participation inquiry within two months. Um, every year, Sean reaches out to the board members. Um, this year, we did miss June. So we um, actually touched base with everybody in January. We'll go back to doing that twice yearly but we'll just respond within two months and we you know so we have an idea whether you want to remain on the board or not um and no response to direct communication in multiple forms for three months as uh, one josh added um josh do you want to give a little more, more detail on what you were thinking there no just in general if we have uh, a director that is not responding to anything at all uh, it's reasonable to have some amount of time frame where we we try to account for vacations, illness, emergencies, things like that. Um, I think three months is pretty generous, uh, but you know it, it's erring on the side of uh, positive intent. I guess is what I would say. Okay. Yeah, I would say that the specific numbers here are less important that we can quibble about them, but it's more the general idea that if. If people disappear for a long period of time, we should have a process to deal with that. Yeah, I I, I would um, um I mean I agree the numbers are something we can we can debate and, and settle on um at some point. If it's like a year, it's probably excessive, right? Yeah. Uh, if it's if it's two weeks, that's clearly too fast. So finding the the happy middle ground there is kind of like the detail to sort out, but the general idea is like, we want directors to be responsive. Uh, we understand that it's a volunteer position. Uh, and so if something happens and we need to actually go forward with a, a removal for some reason, knowing what the the limits that the board thinks um, are is kind of like what the whole ticket is about, right? Yeah, because the way it's written right now, it's totally arbitrary. Yeah. Um, to be honest with you, so we wanted to give some guidelines that we measure against. Benny, you have your hand up. Benny, if you're saying anything, you're muted. That's because I forgot to press the button. Um, I was just going to say, as a as a counter to this, one of the the way that we solution 
we, the way that we solved this at the Elma Foundation was to uh, instead just make it possible for a unanimous vote by the board to remove somebody so that we could, as a board, say, okay, this person, like, we know that this person isn't going to, isn't as active as we want them to be. We all agree on it, then we can go forward. That way we didn't have to define it in our operations because we felt like it was too, it was potentially too uh, strict in that case. So that's, yeah, I just wanted to offer it's written option. now. Okay. Um, but it's like, well, yeah, I mean, because what is dereliction of duty? Dereliction of duty to me might be something totally different to you. So we just wanted to give some clarity of things um, yeah, based on sense. how it's written. Yeah. So. Oh. Yeah, I think having having written guidelines and setting expectations makes it makes it a lot easier. It also makes it easier for the board to. If the need arises to go through this process, there's a checklist we can follow and things like that. Um, it, it feels like generally easier for everyone to have these in writing somewhere. Does anyone else have any comments, concerns on number 125, which is still a work in progress? Okay, 126. Brian, you want to take this one? Uh, yeah, sure. So uh, this is an update from, uh, we, we sat down and had a, a, a pretty productive conversation in Brussels about how to deal with the problem of uh, like coordinating SIG activity in a way that helps them choose technical solutions and, and kind of uh, in, in relation to the, the topic that we just talked about a, a little while ago, this would be a primary stakeholder in things like setting priorities from a project perspective when we have, uh, you know, requests of the infrastructure team or the stream team or, uh, you know, other folks that provide uh, services to the, pro to the project. And so this ticket is about uh, chartering the SIG Council. Uh, this proposal, if, if we go back to the, the previous proposal, this one's a whole lot more simple. Uh, and uh, I think it addresses most of the concerns that we had in the past, but um, basically we want the uh, the SIG chairs or their designee and a few key members of the infrastructure team, the stream engineering team, and possibly someone from REL engineering to get together on a regular basis and uh, just talk about technical solutions and choose uh, uh, choose common solutions that are useful for solving problems amongst the SIGs. And so you can see the requirements there, uh, regular minuted meetings, uh, deliberative open discussion, and uh, the ability, but um, but not the uh, requirement to be able to enter into an executive session if there are any uh, private or security related matters that uh, technical matters that we, want, we, we might want to get into. Um, and then, uh, you know, also as part of the discussion, we decided that uh, you know, getting a, a, a like sort of a readout to the board, uh, but also to the project as a whole is sort of a state of the SIGs report, just, uh, you know, as a collective group where, where SIG leaders think the industry uh, and the, the project in general is going from a SIG perspective. Uh, just a short summary of that on a regular basis, whatever regular means uh, is important to us. And I saw Davide, you had a couple of uh, a couple of minor edits about uh, coordinating the governance with the the board itself as the uh, the SIG council evolves. I think that's a uh, a really good point that we can reflect in the in the description. Um, but I do think it's important that the board gets involved in any of the governance uh, uh, structures that we have in place. So, uh, but yeah, it's a really short ticket. If uh, if there are questions about individual items, let me know. Uh, we can I can go back to. Uh, to some of the discussion items that we had uh, when we first talked about this. But uh, yeah, what questions do we have? I will. Uh, first, I'm, I'm sorry I didn't make that bunch. I was running around a lot in Brussels. Um, my question is, um, 
it, whether it makes sense to uh, seat Apple, uh, they I can't. They're kind of honor. They're not a sig of CentOS, but they like produce a lot for CentOS. Uh, but now I'm second guessing that because if it's really about making sure infra is in place for the sigs, I mean their infra is taken care of by Fedora. So uh, I'm gonna just put it out there, but um, whether it makes sense. I think Apple could provide a, a useful voice here. Um, but from a practical standpoint, that I feel like there is a strong overlap between people involved in Apple and people involved in CentOS 6. Uh, so we might not need to like have a formal invite out for it. But yeah, I think in general, Apple's input would likely be valuable here. And so I think like one property of the SIG Council, it is the is the primary technical stakeholder of the CentOS project, and it's made up of SIG chairs. And uh, so that means that the meetings are designed to be open, so you know folks can come by if they, uh, you know, if they can make it or or something like that. But there's also a provision in, uh, like in the charter here, for the group to request the presence of some other stakeholder. So if Apple comes comes in as some sort of uh, you know, cross collaborative, uh, you know, project or something like that. I, there's a, a mechanism for the the group to ask for a, a representation for a meeting or two or however long you think is necessary. Yeah, I think in yeah, general, in if mind. we, sorry, Amy, go ahead. I was just going to say, keep in mind that just because members of Apple leadership are currently SIG chairs and representatives, that may not always be in the future. So I like, I kind of like the idea of them being one of the optional groups. Go ahead, Davida. Um, no, I, I was saying, I think in general, I think the way it's structured here and the way I would like this to to work ideally is that we get the six, we get the six together and then we, they, we let them figure out what is useful and who is useful to be in this meeting. And they can, they can iterate on it as needed and they can invite people and things like that. And definitely Apple can be one of those. But uh, like, as I mentioned during that meeting, I would be reticent to like, over-specify these at the charter level, because at the end of the day, like, I think as a board, we should decide that we want to establish this group and set the ground rules, but then we should let this group kind of operate as they see fit. And then if that doesn't work out, the board can obviously step in. Um, but I think that makes it a lot easier for people to be productive rather than ha having to over specify everything at the beginning. Yeah, I like the idea of giving them a fairly large canvas to run with. Have just enough governments to give them direction, um, but leave it open enough for them to grow and then they can always come back. Um, we don't want it that Anytime they want to change their governance, that it's a whole meeting and involved process. So lightweight, but definable. Um, from so a. <laughs> compared, compared to the last time we brought this out, this is really going well. I'm yeah. happy with this discussion. Um, from a practical standpoint, um, what does the implementation of this look like? Like, do do we make we make like a pull request to the governance to like add a description of this body and then vote on it? Can we? Because I'm vote? assuming we have write it somewhere. Yeah, I mean, it, it's got to be written it's got to be in our new doc structure um for governance um well we already have governance stuff on centos.org so right that's... um no i think getting it up sooner versus later is a good thing um i'm just trying to think of structure maybe have the pull request and if we either put plus ones and comments in the merge the pr for the merge or we could do a raising of hands once we have it, but that I think that would take longer to do because we'd have to wait for the next meeting. Um, so I'm good with everyone putting a plus one, negative one on the PR. 
to get merged in once it's written. And we can also put comments in. We need this changed or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, actually, that seems like a good process also for like one, one to five, the previous issue, which was also effectively a governance amendment. So, um, uh, Brian, do you want to take an action to like formally write this up? And then we can, we can take it from there. Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, we, we certainly can do that. Uh, I'd like to set a deadline on, uh, taking commentary on the issue if that's going to be the place where we gather up any changes that we want to make can we pick a how uh, about one week from the time of the pr hitting okay is that reasonable for everyone anyone have any vacation coming up uh i mean i think that's fine we get if it. folks have concern we can like we can bring it up and we can adjust as needed, but this seems like generally reasonable to me. Alrighty, any more comments, concerns on this issue? All right, Sean, you're up. How exciting. I have a very long list, but I think not. Um, but some of them will just pass right over. Uh, the videos are all up from Connect, um, except for my talk and the first like two minutes of the packet talk, because I, um, I, despite having three sources of recordings, I managed to screw that up on uh, Friday morning. <laughs> so um, I just put items in here to make sure we talked about the outreach thing and the docs day, which uh, were on the agenda. So those have already been discussed. Um, scale is coming up in a few weeks. Uh, we're doing like a three hour thing on the Thursdays, the first day of scale. So it's like before the really main programming, uh, and there'll be a presentation that'll be kind of a, um, overview of the CentOS ecosystem. And then we'll go into a packaging workshop that, uh, Carl will deliver. So if you're coming to scale, like, uh, you know, try to come in, um, um, in time for that. I know a lot of times people just come for the to the main weekend. So, um, and tell your tell your friends or whoever, I'm gonna start um, pushing that one on social media um, now. So, um, and also in events, uh, Red Hat Summit's coming up and it's not a big thing we do community-wise, but you know that we have, you know, Red Hat does its community central and, and we have a, a place in there where we talk about Fedora and CentOS, uh, but we are this year uh, adding a community day uh, on the Monday before the main programming uh, of Red Hat Summit. Um, and it's going to have, uh, there's like different tracks of it. Like there's a there's an open shift thing and an Ansible thing, but we're adding this year a, uh, a room that's basically Linux operating system stuff. Uh, and so there will be a, a block of Fedora talks, a block of CentOS talks, and a block of um, some other kind of new OS development talks. So, um, not something we massively promote uh, community-wise, but if you are coming to Red Hat Summit or know people who are coming to Red Hat Summit, um, I think it's worth coming in um, early enough to catch the Monday stuff. Um, and then, um, I'm gonna flip these around. Uh, no, I won't. Um, board face-to-face, -face, we brought up in chat. I want just, do we wanna discuss here whether we are interested in a board face-to-face -face or do we wanna keep that async over chat? And the proposal is to do one at Flock, um, and I don't know specifically which day, which will be in August. Um, one thing I will bring up is that I found out last week that in August, apparently DevConf US is also happening again. It's coming back? Uh, All right. That's what the website says. The website says it, and there was a LinkedIn post about it and everything. They, they just have have a LinkedIn posted, so it's yeah. awesome. Like Flock, that's really bad. <laughs> and it is right after Flock. Right after, so it's not conflicting, but. Nope, but it is the <laughs> literal next week. Oh, boy. Did the days for Flock get announced? Uh, like, they are not announced, not, but I know what public. they are. <laughs> oh, okay. That's fun. Yeah. They're, they're going to be announced shortly. Uh, they're, yeah, no, I, I didn't realize that that was right after. That, that's. Okay. Can, we'll can see someone... how that goes. 
Can someone <laughs> link to the post or to the LinkedIn or whatever? For the DevCon? Yeah, please. I don't. I didn't even know this. So, uh, is I'm looking for it. I will put a link. Yeah, it's, it's just that oh, one. Devconf.us does give dates. It says August 14th to the 16th, Boston. So. Yep, that one. That one's given, and I, I can at least say that it's right after Flock. <laughs> so you know, if you all want to do a board meeting there, that's cool too. But I'm, I'm proposing Flock. I will make whatever you want happen. Yeah, no, I, I'm okay with Flock. I was just bringing this up in case people had constraints that made Flock harder for them. This is also an option. I don't think we'd be able to most likely go from Flock down to DevConf. I think there's too many days in between. Um, I don't think they would flow together. Um, yeah, as somebody who's very um, geographically close, I would not. Um, go straight from one to the other. There's a gap between. If you're coming over from Europe, I think you might just consider staying in the US. Um, yeah. Yeah. Black 7 to the 10th. I think I just gave away. Yeah. You didn't, yeah. You didn't give out where, so where, even though it's out there. Um, so yeah, I mean, yeah. there's enough days in between. You wouldn't necessarily go from one to the other. Yeah, it's three days. Yeah, before. I won't be able to do both. So we need to decide. Soon because uh, it's will I will manage to, to justify two weeks. It would be hard. I, I will also struggle to do both and was primarily going to be at Flock because of other requirements that I have. And I would encourage us, if possible, to not change the location of a board get together uh, from Flock. If there's a second one at DevConf US, I, I encourage that. I love having the board meet with each other, but I don't think I will be able to be at DevConf US this year. Okay. So it sounds like we're I, leaning towards Flock. As a non-board member, I will just say it's probably, I, I think it's better if the board meets at Flock because it's also a lot easier to meet your Fedora counterparts. Yeah. Uh, so we can look at one at Flock and we can, you know, if, if, more than a few of you are going to DevConf, we could organize a board dinner or something, right? A social, but you don't have to make a, a whole meeting out of it. Yeah, I don't know if I would go back and forth for it. Um, but we'll see. Maybe I'll put in a talk for DevConf. Um, um, do you want to send a thing, Sean, so we can figure out who can actually come like for days and stuff and Start for yeah, no, this. And we can decide what yeah, we want to yeah, do on the calendar back. Chat. So I'll I'll send an email and then we can have better accounting of, of that. Uh, I, I want to actually let me touch base with Justin so I know the actual block schedule. Because if there's like meeting days built in or something, then we might just want to make use of that. Um do you do you all see these as a half day thing? Uh full day thing, a few hours. Considering how much good work we got done in Brussels just by having people in one place and how much we got done last year for a day, I would definitely shoot for a day. Um, whether it would go longer than that, I don't know. Um, I don't think so, but you know, we're, we're still like six months out things could change that we want to have more time. Yeah, I'm okay with doing a day. If we do a day, it's probably easier to make this like a full day before flock or a full day after flock. Um, again, depending on what the flock schedule looks like, but that seems, yeah. that seems fairly straightforward. All right, any more, more comments, oh, concerns? Uh, oh yeah, sorry, anything else on this? All right, then the only other thing I have on there is we will be um, uh, electing a new board member. I'm not gonna say publicly the nominees or whatever, cause it's that's board data, but uh, I have sent an email to the board, uh, to the board list. So you all have the list of nominees and um, I guess we'll just, I'll just, 
uh, opening open up a voting procedure. Davide, what was the ranked choice site you recommended? Let's use that. Uh, RCV123.org. RCV123. Yeah, in one of the replies on that thread, uh, I think someone else mentioned it as well. Yeah, it was the RCV123 is the one Davida had suggested. I went back through our scroll. Um, I'm just saying avoid CIVS. It's pretty, pretty much overkill for this. Yeah, um, I mean, I suggested this one because I used it before. But in general, anything that implements an RCV process and is not insane right. seems fine. And it's just easier for everyone to do that instead of using like a Google form. Any, any well, strong I, objection or? Sorry, what? Any strong objection on this proposal to use um, LCV123? Do we have, do we want more time to think about it? Or does anyone yeah, have a, another more. favorite? We're open to suggestions of other um, voting. Do we put a date on, uh, on choosing the final solution or? Well, if no one objects to us using this, I say we just use it, unless someone yeah, has yeah. something better. Yeah, unless someone has a problem with it, we can call it a solved problem. I yeah. will use smoke signals from a chimney if that's what you all want. Just let's... I would rather not count those. <laughs> let's, let's vote. I would be very amused to see how we would see the smoke signals that Josh puts <laughs> out all the way everywhere. You yeah. All you need is a big enough fire. <laughs> now, I, you'd have to set up a complicated live streaming rig. It could be a fun process. That's right. Different kind the rate of accepted. We all agree. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Unless when Sean goes to set it up, there's some major issue, and then we pick something else. Um, but yeah, I don't see any reason why we wouldn't be able to use it. Cool. I will get that set up and. Uh, get you your ballots by tomorrow. Sweet. And do you have a preference on how long it stays open or do I just keep it open until we have all votes? Yes. You guys might want time to kind of digest and think about the candidates. I do tend to stalk them over the internet to get more senses, so. Hmm. I would say one week, but I know Mike is sick and I do want him to have an opportunity, but I also don't want to carry this out any longer. Um, so why don't we say 10 days? Yeah, that, um, seems, that seems fair. Um, yeah. This is also, by the way, probably something we should have in the governance docs at some point in the future. Like, yeah, we have the 31 days for the nominations to be open, but I couldn't find right. uh, um, additional information. Yeah. Sounds good. I'll get that up. Okay. And sorry about the phone ringing before. I'm find them. sorry if you hear video games in the background. Kids are home and it's time to start playing. All right, it does not look like we have any SIG reports. Do we have any other business? Uh, um, I have one thing that I wanted to ask, which I I was reminded of when we were talking about the SIG Council, but I didn't want to derail that. Um, we went through a while ago the exercise of figuring out which SIGs were selective and which weren't. Um, we should get that to conclusion because having that done would be a prerequisite for Sorting for actually implementing the city council stuff. Uh, yeah. So yeah, I have a list of four, and I have had started, but I haven't done public because it was part of it was sending to the SIGs and then going to public CentOS Devel to see if anybody in publicly wants to take over. Uh, so I will, um, I, I will move that along. I did start it, and then it um, got buried. So yes, that's a priority now with the city council. Cool. Brian, when do you think you will have your proposal up? I think that should be um, 
if you can give me a couple of weeks, that I can probably have that done in, in maybe like two weeks or so. Okay. That gives Sean well, time to mm -hmm. send those emails out. So that's perfect. And just uh, for clarity, the four I have on my list are config management, alt architectures, public CI, and feature request. And I know there was some discussion that, that maybe somebody might want to pick up alt <laughs> architecture. The other three, I think we expect, uh, fully expect to just offboard. Mm -hmm. okay, and one thing we discussed in uh, in Boston, but I don't think we, we put a notice, was the Fabian will retake the infrastic, right? As a chair. Yes. I will just put a note at the end. And I think that was added to the ticket issue. Yeah, I added the comment there when we were uh, when we we're in Boston. Oh yeah, and I think I saw now Fabian replied that he was trying to get the meeting calendar thing updated. Yeah, just put a note so everybody's aware. And Sean, did you see Brian's comment? No. Oh, oh, in the okay. in the chat. Oh, okay. I okay. Yes. Okay. I, I just want to make sure you saw that because once we close the meeting, it may not be visible mm -hmm. anymore. So, so did, did you say Fabian was having a hard time with the CentOS calendar? It's, um, I think he wanted to, the calendar still has an old meeting doesn't exist anymore and he wants mm -hmm. to clean it up. And I replied with like, the calendar is here, you should send a PR. Okay. Um, the, but I don't the know the if he asked is, that. is um, unpleasant and we can have a conversation, but we don't have to do that in the board meeting. Uh, I agree. <laughs> Yeah, we do because I implemented it. Did you? Yeah, yeah that actually, was it, 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 it it truly is my fault. But I I I you know it's now eighteen. It's just <laughs> the, the the tool is relying and on it. And it no became an ugly out. teenager, and yeah. I can't help you. Is no longer maintained upstream, and so it's okay. Um, that's fair. Like I, I'm not upset. Like you should get a tool that you like, and I have ideas that you mm -hmm. probably don't need. You probably should talk, you know, unrelated, you should probably talk to Justin about figuring out how to manage the budget thing, because that's your baby, too. I did. Uh -huh. All right. I have All nothing. right. Do we have any other business? All right, this was a very productive meeting. Um, real happy that we're finally moving ahead with the SIG candle. Um, and I will give everyone back six minutes of their time. Thank you all for attending. Thank you. Stopping recording. Thank you. Bye.